Okay? So it's very important to me. Now, what's the result? Of, what's the implications of this? When I present this, people say, yeah, so what? I'm a Christian. I don't believe it. Well, unfortunately, uh, the ideological dimension of Nazism was based on Darwinism. And my book here, which so far is the best seller I've produced, and a lot of secular uh, groups are buying it, I guess, because Hitler is a popular topic now, but the, the ideological goal of Nazism was, these are Thomas Childers who wrote a book about this, said the greater German empire was to be a racially pure empire, and Germany was the last best racial hope of mankind. World War II was based on race. Why? Because of Darwinism, and that's the, the book. And there you can see the infamous Adolf Hitler. By the way, I noticed there's not many parents naming their kids Adolf <laughs> anymore, <laughs> which makes sense. Notice how arrogant he looks. But he is a member of the superior race. And a lot of you guys aren't, by the way. By the way, the superior race was Aryans, which was Germans and Scandinavians primarily. So my family background is German and Scandinavian, so I am a member of the superior race. <laughs> so you better, better treat me good. <laughs> but uh, if you're... Now, we all know the Jews, of course, he wasn't too thrilled about. And that made it very clear the reason he didn't like the Jews. They were not as evolved as the Aryans. And he said the reason they were not evolved was because they uh, interbred so much and did not fight wars. The Aryans were out there fighting wars, eliminating the weak, where the Jews were not. And there are other reasons as well. By the way, when you start a war, you have to have lots of reasons. So this reason is given, but it's not given uh, as often as it actually was. And again, we defined evolution already, so we don't have to go through that. So how did Germany want to achieve this? Well, they wanted to, first of all, expunge the Judeo-Christian-Muslim doctrine of human divine origins from mainline German theology, and they did that. And they replaced it with Darwinism. And one reason I got interested in this, because I see a lot of parallels with what happened in Nazi Germany, with what, happened, what is happening today in our country. There is the origin of species, and as you know, the subtitle is Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. And uh, first is take over the churches, and you can see the cross and the swastika were united. And that's what Hitler did. And uh, this is an interesting cross because what Hitler wanted to do was have the superior races have lots of kids. And the inferior races either sterilized them or eventually killed them. And this, if you had, I think, five children, you got this uh, award from the government, and this is their Deutsche Mutter. A German mother. It was kind of an award. Few resisted. You can see the massive number of people who supported Adolf Hitler. And there were exceptions. Dirk Bonhoeffer, of course, the most well-known, who opposed uh, the Nazi uh, regime. And the main opposition was the churches and the Christians. Now, the churches and the Christians did not put up much opposition. Why? Because at that time in Germany... It was infused with Darwinism, and most of the churches accepted Darwinism. And the next step was you accept Darwinism, then you accept the German Nazi ideology, and we can see what happened. Uh, many Christians were among what the Jews today call the righteous Gentiles. Corrie ten Boom is probably one of the most famous examples. That's the shop, by the way, where they were jewelers, and they repaired watches and sold jewelry, and that's the shop where the ten Boom family lived. And uh, there she is. And this right here, there's a wall of the righteous Christians. Sorry, the righteous Gentiles, most of whom were Christians. And then the control of the schools, and you can see the swastika is in the schools. And Darwinism was infused in the schools. Uh, Hitler's uh, men made sure that all the children in the schools were indoctrinated very thoroughly in Darwinism because that was central to the Nazi ideology. Then control the textbooks, and I have a lot of these textbooks, which I did a paper on. In fact, one chapter in my book here covers this, showing how Darwinism infiltrated the textbooks to indoctrinate the students in this worldview. And uh, Hitler said, let me control the textbooks, and I will control the, uh, the state, which is what happened. 
And the chief goal was to indoctrinate the youth. They realized that a lot of the older Germans were not going to buy into this worldview. So Hitler really focused on indoctrinating the youth. They were required to join these various groups to be indoctrinated in Darwinism. And the nations they conquered, Hitler was able to uh, just basically move into a number of nations, Austria the best example, Czechoslovakia to some degree, Ukraine to some degree, and he ended up with enormous support from the natives because they saw the Nazis as a liberator. They welcomed the Nazis. So there was very little opposition in a number of the countries until they applied their eugenic Darwinistic ideas and began shooting the locals. Then, of course, things changed uh, against them. And the massive number of uh, support that Hitler had, of course, it's apparent there, based all on eugenics. And in a letter to Darwin, Galton, Galton was Darwin's cousin, uh, Darwin wrote, the appearance of your origin, or Galton wrote, sorry, the appearance of your origin of species formed your crisis in my life. Your book drove away the constraint of my old superstition as if it had been a nightmare, that's the church, and was the first to give me freedom of thought. And the next step was, after this, was eugenics. And Galton was the founder of, he coined the word eugenics, he basically wrote about this extensively, and his ideas then spread throughout the world, including this country. Uh, this presentation, by the way, is not uh, unique at all. There are lots of books that talk about this. Usually they have a chapter or so. Uh, my book's the only book that I know that's ever been published which talks about this from cover to cover. So it focuses on this. But one other book, which actually does a better job than my book, but it costs $40, <laughs> And that is produced by the Holocaust Museum, and it's called Deadly Medicine, Creating the Master Race. And it shows how central Darwinism was in World War II and the Nazi movement. Well illustrated, does an excellent job. Very, very excellent book. And how do they do this? Well, they got to figure out who is the superior race. They applied science. They measured foreheads to try to find out how ape-like they were. And, of course, the more ape-like you were, the more uh, you were away from the uh, higher evolutionary type. And this is the instrument they used to figure out uh, his... I'm not sure if he looks very ape-like, but that's what they're looking for. And then they had to look at eye color. And brown eyes, of course, were seen as uh, inferior, blue eyes superior. Interestingly, now we know that blue eyes is a result of a mutation which prevents the brown coating being covered. Okay, so even though they worship the blue eyes, blue eyes is a result of a mutation. And those of you who have blue eyes, like me, I have a hard time in bright areas. I have a hard time being outside. I know a lot of my friends were out playing sports, and I couldn't do that because it was too bright, because I don't have the protection I need. People with blue eyes are more apt to have a lot of eye problems. Macular degeneration, for example, is higher among blue-eyed people. Why? Because I don't have that extra coating of melanin, the brown, that protects my retina. I don't have it. All of you have blue eyes. Everyone has blue eyes. But some of you have a coating on top of it, which makes your eyes brown. I don't have that coating, so therefore I have a problem. And I've surveyed, we talk about this in my classes, and uh, those who have blue eyes typically have a problem. So Hitler was wrong in judging the blue as superior. They're not superior, they're inferior. They have a mutation, which is a handicap, especially if it's really light blue. They don't have any pigment whatsoever. They can have a problem being outside, period. I have some pigment. And there he's using the eye charts to figure out whether or not their eyes were blue enough. They, were, they weren't blue enough. They added the points up, and the points were too high. They'd end up in the concentration camps. I'm not sure if those two made it, but... And there's the ideal. Blonde hair, blue eyes. In fact, her eyes are kind of green. Okay, that's the ideal. Problem is, as you'll see, not many of the Nazis themselves, the high-level leaders, fit this stereotype. <laughs> Certainly Hitler didn't. And they even had nose charts. And, and one thing I think interesting is, in order to determine whether or not a person was a member of the inferior race... They, for Jews at least, they had to give them a tag. 
to let people know. Wouldn't you be able to tell they're a member of the inferior race by looking at them? Why do you need a sign to tell people they're a member of the inferior race? This, by the way, uh, Corporal Goldberg, he was the ideal German soldier. His picture was throughout Germany as the ideal German soldier. But uh, uh, unfortunately, they found out he was Jewish. <laughs> A little problem. Gold, by the way, gold, gold mean, gale means uh, money and Berg means mountain. So Goldberg is a people who was a banker, typically. Sorry for my pronunciation. Uh, it's been a while since I've studied German. Had to study for my doctorate. And there you can see the ideal couple. And there you can see uh, people walking around uh, Germany and they had to wear the Star of David. Uh, this guy here on the he looks Italian, and I don't know, she looks German. I don't see how they figure out they're Jews, but anyways. Hitler was confident the world would someday thank him for eliminating the rotten parasitic race of Jews and the other inferior races like Slavics, even if Germany lost the war. How am I doing on time? We're getting close to... I'll go through this quickly. The core of, Nazi, core of Nazism was Jews are morally inferior. Christianity was a bastard of Judaism and must be destroyed. Thus the Holocaust. Six million Jews were murdered, and we forget five million Polish Christians were murdered. Christians were next. Hitler made it very clear that he was going to demolish Christianity. And, uh, of course, Hitler and his henchmen were products of German education. And uh, Goebbels wrote in his diary, the fear is deeply anti-Christian. He regards Christianity as a symptom of decay. Rightly so, uh, Goebbels said. Why oppose Christianity? Well, Christianity teaches we help the weak, we help the poor, we help the sick. Uh, Nazism teaches we kill them, get rid of them. They're inferior. Ernst Haeckel, leading Darwinists in Germany, which, of course, uh, converted German, Germany to uh, evolution very rapidly. Haeckel was a great artist. There are some of his pictures. So he had some good qualities. This is a picture of evolution, one of Haeckel's books. A guy right in the corner here, he's evolutionary inferior. And human, less human, less human, less human, even less human. And here's Negroes down here. And here's the ape. So you can see how close the Negroes were to the ape, according to Hitler. Well, I've never seen any ape that looks like that. And I've never seen any Negroes that look like that. So uh, not very accurate. And he was a good artist, which is the point of the previous illustration. So he could have done a better job. But he was distorting the reality. And there they looked at this. This is what they did in the Nazi empire. They looked at the forehead. Uh, the more slanted back it was, the more primitive you were. Joseph Mengele, nice guy, had rich family, went to college, and guess what? He was indoctrinated into Darwinism. And to understand the influence of race in the environment, he utilized twins. And he injected his uh, subjects with all kinds of chemicals to determine what race they were. Try to make uh, brown eyes blue, he injected blue dye in their eyes, so they'd have blue eyes. Thought maybe those borderline people could maybe more, be made more Aryan. So you're, you're pretty Aryan, but got those brown eyes, so let's figure out a way of making them blue. Froze subjects to determine how long they could live, did a lot of experiments. And uh, this is the worst, I think. He smeared phosphorus on Jews and set them on fire to research treating burns. Now, there's plenty of people at burns they could have researched on, but no, they have to take healthy Jews and, and uh, put phosphorus on them and set it on fire to research burns. Screaming was loud, as you might imagine. They had to research this elsewhere because the bother everybody else. And this is a Jew under pressure. And he died. I go into detail in the, my book on this. And, of course, he ended up with millions of bodies that had to be disposed of. And uh, after the war, they, we went after Mengele, but never found him. He died before we could prosecute him. And uh, Gurian, the second most powerful Nazi, one of the leaders persecuted in the churches. Gurian said, let's destroy the churches now. Hitler said, no, no, we have to win the war first, get rid of the Jews, then we'll worry about the Christians. Gurian ended up committing suicide before the state could hang him. And Himmler chief architect of the Holocaust, and became a strong Darwinist, commanded the Gestapo, and studied biology in college. He 
he uh, was head of the camps. Here you can see he's checking the, his handiwork out. This guy was in pretty good shape then. This was a prisoner of war, though. And he also uh, committed suicide. He had a cyanide capsule, which he bit when they uh, caught him. And Goebbels, uh, he was a propaganda minister. And uh, he had, uh, what, seven children, I think. And named them all. First name was all, uh, start with H because in honor of Hitler. And uh, looks like an average pretty girl. She was, I think, 12 then or 11. I forget, but that's the family. And I don't know how this guy got in there. <laughs> I mean, he's not part of the family. I don't know whether they wanted to make sure it was pleasing Hitler, but nice family. His wife was an actress. She was a Czech, by the way, inferior race. So I don't know how he got away with marrying her, but he did. She was Slavic, and Slavics were part of the inferior race. And they uh, basically killed all their children. They knocked them out with morphine by an SS doctor. Then they took cyanide capsules, put them in their mouth, and then pushed their jaw up and broke the cyanide capsules and then capsules and then Goebbels and shot his wife and then uh, he shot himself. So why? People, when I present this, say why. They felt that there's no way they could live in Germany without Hitler. He was, became a god. No way they wanted to live in a post- Nazi Germany. And the kids didn't, they didn't want them to live there as well, so they, and there you can see his body was burned, that's Goebbels when he committed suicide. Stryker, he's called the Jew Bader number one, and there you can see he's, he didn't look very uh, Aryan either, by the way, <laughs> but uh, there you can see he is, and uh, that's his journal he put, put out, Der Sturmer, the Juden sind unser und Glück. Jews are our bad luck. And every issue was devoted to how inferior the Jews were. And uh, he, now this I got from a website. They say he was murdered by the Jews. He wasn't. He was hung by the Americans, the Russians, and the British. And uh, when he was hung, then they got this picture. Although as he was walking off the gallows, he basically said, How Hitler and the, the communists will bury you someday. Source of the idea? Charles Darwin. Darwin's goal, and I go through this in my other book on the uh, dark side of Darwin, Darwin's goal was to murder God. Made that very clear, what he wanted to do. How do you murder God? You destroy the reason people believe in him. Why do people believe in him? Because look around, we see the creation. When you ask people why they believe in God, invariably they say because the creation. Creation demands a creator. So you destroy the belief that the Creation demands a creator by coming up with another reason for the creation, namely evolution. Then you destroy the reason people believe in God, then they become atheists. And uh, top scientists, with this repetition, top scientists, about 98% are atheists. Why is evolution believed? Well, in this country, many countries, it's all you get. It's, courts have consistently ruled you cannot present information against evolution in the schools. All of this other PowerPoint that I showed you, I presented that so far, and I haven't had any problems, but technically I could be fired for presenting the information I did about uh, mutations. Uh, and the damage, it's just horrendous, the damage done. 55 million people died. The major cities in Germany, as well as others, were destroyed, and you can see what's left, not much. We are under instructions, don't bomb the cathedral. So they leveled Cologne, Curlin, they pronounce it, something like that. What is it? Cologne. Cologne. Curlin, okay. I, I learned how to read German, not pronounce it, so I just have to. But yeah, that's right. That's how it. And uh, leveled the city pretty much except the cathedral. And there you can see a better picture. And the color ones are good because it makes it living for us. We can see uh, what happened to Germany. And after the war, there was still massive starvation and death and other problems. It took a while to recover. Hamburg, pretty much the whole city burned. And uh, Dresden. The reason the British bombed Dresden is because the Germans bombed the chief cultural center of Britain. So they retaliated by bombing the chief cultural center of Germany. It had no military significance. 
So that's why Dresden was bombed. And there's another picture of Dresden. And uh, there's the ovens. What Hitler attempted to do must be ranked alongside the most heinous crimes of history. And Darwin as the father of one of the most destructive philosophies of history. This is a quote from a, a writer. And uh, USA, we were not exempt. In Indiana, right next door to me, they uh, sterilized over 7,600 people. About 100,000 people in this country were sterilized. The Supreme Court ruled that this was appropriate because we have enough imbeciles in this country. We've got to sterilize these people. So the Supreme Court uh, lent credibility to that. We worked closely with the Nazis. The Minnesota Eugenics Society, uh, Dr. Uh, Dwight, worked with uh, Hitler, congratulating him on his eugenics programs and basically saying we need to do the same thing in this country. And that's the end. So, thank you very much. <laughs>